Welcome back to our channel ladies and gentlemen. I can't help but notice that there are several allies of William Ruto. People who used to support his policies. People who believed in him. People who subscribed to his political ideologies. And they could defend him to the last drop of their blood. Are now making a sharp U-turn. Others have already made that U-turn and they are the worst critic of William Samoy Ruto. People like Ekuru Okot were people who used to defend William Ruto. And they used to promote his ideologies. But today, Ekuru Okot is someone who is poking holes in Ruto's policies in this government and is saying that this government has failed. The other person who has shocked me is the city lawyer, Ahmed Nasir, Grand Mullah. Grand Mullah is a staunch supporter of William Ruto. He started with Uhuru Kenyatta and then was with William Ruto, then he switched Kidogo to Uhuru Kenyatta. Now he's back. And if you see the way he is sending his coded messages, he's got a problem with especially the the other arm of the government, the judiciary, the judicial arm of the government. And he believes that this government that is corrupt. He feels that the executive and the, the, the judiciary are working together and they are shielding criminals. But today, he went a notch higher and dropped a bombshell because Ahmed Nasir always uh, sends a message without really taking William Ruto head on. He would hide around some people when he wants to send a message because he still wants to keep their friendship with William Samuel Ruto. But today, he kind of knocked William Ruto and he dragged in the two main liars, those who profess fallacy in Ruto's government. And he was talking about Ruto's promises. I'm about to show you this video that is very, really very funny because I have listened to all the lies that William Ruto peddled before, during and after elections. But one that I would vote for to be the number one lie is one that was shared by Ahmed Nasir. This video was captured when William Ruto was meeting the women caucus where William Ruto signed a deal with the women and he promised them what he would do including the two-third uh, two gender rule and many other things. And one of the things that he said there was that he would give them diapers. I've never listened to such a lie with all the world leaders converging together. William Ruto would be voted as the number one liar in the world. Just listen to what he told the women during that occasion. I commit to provide mothers of newborn babies with diapers for their children for a minimum of three months paid for by the government of Kenya. This is what Ahmed Nasir asked, who has eaten money from the diapers at Oletumbi? Rigedi Geshagwa, did Uhuru as well carry money for the diapers in sacks? And that simple statement indicts the whole of the Kenya Kwanzaa team. And I remember sometimes back when this government was unable to pay the civil servants, Rigedi Geshagwa said that all the money that they were supposed to use were carried in sacks a few days before they were sworn in. And this is the reason why Ahmed Nasir is selecting this particular video where he promised our women and ladies that he would be giving them diapers for a minimum of three months. A minimum. That means a maximum could be as, as long as uh, one year. You know, during the campaign, William Ruta and Rigetha Geshagwa were leading the entire Kenya Kwanza team, giving lofty promises, very high promises. 
And these lies never selected. They cut across the board, across all gender, across all ages. But the people who suffered most were the women and the youths. Because the youths were told they were the hustlers. And the, the, the women were told they are the mamamboga. And what they were told was really very juicy to hear. Very harmonious to the ears. But now it's turning out that all these were empty promises. And when you listen carefully to William Ruto, you'll realize that he's a man who can look at your face without blinking and he will tell you something that even he does not believe in. And Ahmed Nasir is asking what went wrong because this is now something that has become a norm. That William Ruto would meet teachers and they sign a deal. He would meet the county governments, all the governors, and they signed a deal. Meet all the youths and the, 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 the border border group, they signed a deal. I remember when he took uh, the, the Mamamboga lady, Pauline, who is now crying out that uh, she was abandoned. Even though later people like uh, Dennis Tumbi called her to refute those claims. And the blame game has been so paramount that anytime something happens, they already, they already have a crafted narrative that it was the previous regime. You ask them why the high cost of living is being realized today, they will tell you it was because of the previous regime. They are unable to pay their civil servants, it was the previous regime. And this is why Ahmed Nasir is posing a very simple but uh, important question. Did Uhuru Kenyatta also carry all this, carry all the diapers in sacks? The reality and something that Ahmed Nasir is trying to put across is that, in fact, remember, just see how Ahmed Nasir is avoiding to call Ruto's name. He's calling Rigedi Geshagwa and calling Olet, uh, Olet, uh, Dennis Itumi, knowing very well that if there are two people who would be voted as the best or the worst liars in this government, it will be Dennis Itumi and Rigedi Geshagwa. And he knows very well that these are Ruto's right hand men, people whom they are working with together. Because when you mention Itumbi, you are also mentioning William Samoy Ruto. And in a way, Rigedi is just telling people that Ruto, Ruto is a liar and is indicting the conscience of the women who used to sing around. Because if you listen, women are really clapping and giving him an applaud and they are really very happy because they felt that Ruto would really indeed give them diapers. And the hustlers who are also hoodwinked are being indicted that it is high time we see this administration for what it is, full of liars. And this is what Ahmed Nasir is saying. I don't know where he, he, the, he went because these are archives. These are lies that uh, are hidden. And I realized that Kenyans are keeping check everything that William Ruto told them. And William Ruto keeps on giving more promises. There is a joke that uh, William Ruto is telling us and our fans that very soon he will give them a Champions League cup. Noting very well that Arsenal fans are really longing for a day that they will uh, capture that very coveted cup. They have never won it. And there's also another lie that William Ruto is telling Kenyan farmers that he will give them electric jambes. What, what, what they are using to, to, to cultivate their land. Because William Ruto has become the object and the subject of, of, of discussion and mockery. Because his lies are too much. He lies without making a break. He has not implemented what he gave. He's giving more promises. The reason why we are where we are today is because we listened to lies. Even to date, the government still continues to lie to us and there are people who unfortunately are still listening to them and they believe these lies. We don't really learn from our mistakes because had we listened to William Ruto quoting wrong verses, in an interview, had we listened to him dictating the kind of questions that he needed to be asked while in an interview, had we unpacked the reality of what William Ruto was telling us, I can assure you people wouldn't have voted him in. I know many people keep on telling me that the elections were stolen. 
Yes, but there are people who also listened to the administration as they were campaigning and they swallowed the lie and they voted him in. That is captured in the very many regrets that the youths are giving. They go on social media, they regret when they voted him in. And this is a lesson to us that next time we are given an opportunity to vote our leaders, let us scrutinize them from the MCA to the presidency. It is a call, a wake-up call, that we don't vote people just because of their empty promises. We need to think twice. The good thing is that 90% of Kenyans have really unmasked, they have really debunked all these lies, and they now see this administration for what it is. They keep on talking, but Kenyans now know. You go to social media, you will see them. You go to mainstream media, they unmask the lies that have been hidden. And this is going to be the fall of this administration because I don't think whether Kenyans will listen to them again. Of course, there are a few people who will still look at them as their tribesmen. They will be voting on their tribal affiliation lines, they will on tribal and ethnic lines. They will also be voting based on their party uh, lines. But there are people who will now be looking at leaders with what they promise. To date, the cost of living is just too high, yet the other side promised free education from the CBC to, to, to from the baby classes to the university. They promised that they would give the, 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 the poor and the unemployed families 6,000 per month. People rejected that. No wonder the Bible says that the stone that was rejected became the cornerstone. Today, people are now running to Raila Mulodinga and asking, can you come and help us fight this? Yet, when they were given an opportunity to vote in Raila Mulodinga, some of them did not because he doesn't belong to their tribe. They believe William Ruto so much. So this kind of lies as has been unpacked by Ahmed Nasir should not go in vain because Ahmed Nasir wants to open your ears that we don't repeat these mistakes and that we should ask this administration why they keep on lying instead of implementing what they had promised us. So ladies and gentlemen, let us continue putting and piling pressure so that we don't listen to more lies. Let the administration stand up and implement what they promised. If they cannot, then it is high time they vacate and let those people who are able to take on leadership. And that is my take.